Hello and welcome to our practice exercise discussion for the cost of goods manufactured. In this exercise, we are going to be going through an example of, indeed, a cost of goods ex manufactured exercise, but we're also going to calculate the cost of goods sold, which is another step of it. So let's take a look here. We have Smith & Jesson Incorporated that has the beginning and ending below inventory balances below and some other information at the end of December 2018. Now this problem doesn't really tell us whether it's a month or a year. Just by some of the numbers, I would suggest it's a month. Uh, of information going on, but it doesn't really matter in any case. We just need to know where to put things, how to calculate that. So let's take a look here at the beginning balance for direct materials is 12,750. The ending balance is 8,000. So what that tells us, just by looking at this alone, it tells us that we must have at least used 4,750 in direct materials. However, as we'll see in a little bit, we also purchased some more direct materials in $45,000. So not only did we use $47,50, we also used the $45,000 that we purchased, at least the cost-wise. It may not have been the exact same units, but it was the cost. So we'll come back to that in a bit. Work in process inventory, units that have been started but not yet completed. We started the year with $750. We ended the, I'm sorry, started the month with $750, ended the month with $3,500. So we worked on a lot of things, but we didn't quite complete them. Finished goods inventory, units that have been finished but not yet sold. We started the year with 200, ended the year with 3,800, ended the period with 3,800. So again, these are units that have been completed, not yet sold. There would be another item if we had this information about the cost of goods sold. As we're going to see in a bit, that's a separate calculation altogether. The cost of goods sold, this relates to units that were already finished and now they've been sold. So we have some other information that we're going to need here. Now not all of this relates to our cost of goods manufactured. Only those costs that relate to the production of a unit relates to the cost of goods manufactured. Some of the other items might actually show up on the income statement itself. For this problem, we're not going to do a full-blown income statement. Instead, we're just doing the cost of goods sold section. So we do need the purchase of direct materials. That's obviously a product cost. Factory supervisor salaries of $57.50. Again, it's factory, so it relates to production. I will mention that it's an indirect cost, so it doesn't directly relate to a unit itself being produced. But since this supervisor oversees the factory itself, it is an indirect labor cost, which becomes part of overhead. Sales, salaries, and commissions. Here we have a selling cost, which is not part of production, so we're going to ignore this. Delivery cost, same thing, does not relate to production. Sales revenue, It's if we're doing an income, income statement, this would matter, but it's certainly not a production item. Factory utility costs, $1,200. So this is factory related again. It's an indirect cost. It's overhead, as would be factory rent, $17,750. Finally, we get back to direct labor, $23,000. This relates to production, obviously, and it's not overhead. It's a direct cost. So for this template, we have... I have some blanks here. Now, the formatting, depending on the textbook you use, what your instructor wants to see, it might differ a little bit. So it's not really a big deal exactly how you uh, format this. You maybe use three columns or two columns. I suppose one could actually fit it all into one column if they wanted to. We're going to use a fairly common three-column template here. So what we need to take a look at, first of all, and again, there are a few ways of doing this. We're trying to identify what have we actually completed here. What cost of goods manufactured relates to what we've actually completed. So to do that, we need to know what costs we've added, first of all, what we had in work in process compared to what we ended up with. Because if we start the period with an amount of work in process, and then end of the period with less, then obviously we must have completed some of those units plus, in addition, all the costs that has come in to begin with. 
So again, a variety of do ways of doing this. The way I'm going to set it up here is by setting up the beginning inventory for work in process. And if we go back up here, that was $750. So beginning inventory. Now we're going to take a look at what we've added throughout the year. So we've added materials, we've added labor, and we've added overhead. And it usually goes in that order. I suppose there's not really a, a requirement that it go in that order. But materials, what I'm going to do is set up a, sub to, or a heading here. Notice that, uh, I guess we do have a line there. We're not going to use this. We're not going to put anything in this line, in this particular cell. It's just a subtotal, or not a subtotal, a heading, a subheading if you will. So direct materials used. Now for this to work, we need to know what we had for beginning inventory of direct materials to begin with. We had $12,750. Now we added something. I'm just going to call this purchases. We added materials by purchasing them, and that was $45,000. So we're going to have a subtotal here. Direct materials available for use. $57,750 that we could use. Doesn't mean we have. We could use them. But the difference is what we have not used. We had $8,000 left, so apparently we didn't use those. And the end result is the direct materials used. So we're going to do a little formula here. 12750 plus the 45000 minus the 57750 or I'm sorry, minus the $8,000. So I just basically gave the subtotal minus the $8,000. That tells us we used $49,750 of materials, which again, that's what we were talking about up above anyways, so it's not too much of a surprise. The next step is direct labor, which is usually a pretty straightforward amount. And they gave us $23,000. Now notice the way this three column is essentially set up, you have all the details in the left column. When I say that, details that are needed to even make a subtotal. So that's why our direct material amounts went here. Then we had a subtotal of a cost, plus we're adding in labor. And then we're going to list out some overhead items here and have a subtotal of labor. So here we have another item. Manufacturing overhead or factory overhead. Notice that I have not entered anything in the, there's no yellow cell for an amount. It's just a uh, subheading again. And in fact, I'll uh, italicize those so we can see that they're just headings. Nothing to be expected for an amount. So what types of manufacturing overhead items did we have here? We had factory supervisor salaries. In fact, I'm just going to copy that. And that was fifty-seven fifty. Change the format back to yellow. Fifty-seven fifty. We had factory utility cost of twelve hundred. Was that twelve hundred? We said yes. Factory rent. Of 17750 and I have room for one more but I don't believe we have any other items let's see we had direct materials we've already included so factory supervisor factory utility and factory rent so we really don't have anything for this next item this is just a template I created that would uh, handle more if we needed it again it's more of a challenge to figure out what really does go on there that's why the template allow us for this extra cell but there's nothing there so we have total Manufacturing overhead. We 
could sum these three items up. Now what we're going to get here, now notice we're in the third column. We have our three different costs that we've added this period. So the 750 relates to items that the costs that were started in work in process. Now these three costs we've added. So it's no different than a merchandising company that goes out and purchases merchandise. This company is building it. So what we have for this line is there are a variety of names for it. I'm calling it current manufacturing costs. These are the costs that have been added this period. So there are these three costs, direct materials used, direct labor, and overhead. So we have added $97,450 of manufacturing costs this period. So the next one, now notice back up here, we had a subtotal under direct materials, direct materials available to use. Down here, there's another subtotal. You could call it manufacturing costs to account for or manufacturing costs available to complete. These are the ones that we could possibly complete, but we may not have done so. So I'm just going to call them. The name's a little unusual, but I want to make it clear that it's unavailable to complete because we want to know have we actually completed it. So this is going to be the sum of the 750 plus the costs we've added this period. Now the point is we didn't complete them all because we had some left at the end of the period. And that was the 3500 that we had left over. The bottom line here is the cost of goods manufactured, what we must have actually completed. So we we could have completed 98,200, but we didn't complete 3,500 of it, so we must have completed 94,700 of it. That's what's going on with this particular scenario. So now we're moving on to requirement two to calculate the cost of goods sold. Now I didn't put a template together here. Uh, what we would actually do here is the same basic pattern as what we used twice up above. Beginning inventory finished goods. So we have $200 beginning finished inventory plus the cost of goods that we manufactured from up above, 94700 So this, again, is no different than a company going out to purchase new material, but now we're building it instead. We get another subtotal, just like before, cost of goods available for sale. So we had the beginning inventory, plus what we built, what we added this period, to give us cost of goods available for sale. Now, just like before, we didn't sell it all. Because we have some left over. Finished goods ending inventory, which was $3,800. So 3,800, we could have completed 94,900, could have sold them, but we didn't sell 3,800, so we must have only sold $91,100. Now this number, this is the calculation, that's the proper way to calculate it, but if we take a look at this number, it does look a little bit odd because our sales revenue was only 115,000 and our cost of those sales were 91,100, so that's pretty slim margin. But based on the numbers we have, that is the proper amount, it's the proper answer there. So if we were, we're doing the, the uh, overall income statement, we need to bring in the income, the, or the sales, the revenue, subtract out cost of goods sold, 
to get a gross profit, and then we'd subtract out all of the other expenses to arrive at net income. But for this particular problem, we only needed to do the cost of goods sold. So I do want to back up and review one last piece of it or repeat one more item of it. The pattern that we have is beginning inventory plus some sort of addition gives you a subtotal, whatever you want to call it, available for use, available for sale, available to complete, depending on which cost you're in. So that's your subtotal. And you're going to be subtracting out the ending inventory for that, that category to get your final answer. So we did that with direct materials. We also did it with work in process overall. Beginning inventory plus these three additions of cost, which we subtotal down here, gives us a subtotal available to complete minus our ending inventory to tell us what we did complete, cost of goods manufactured. We have it one more time. Beginning inventory plus some sort of addition, which in this case is cost of goods manufactured, gives us a subtotal available for sale, subtract out finished, ending, or finished goods ending inventory to get your final answer. So that pattern repeats itself three times. And once you do that, you can break it up and you can understand that all of this, what appears to be complex complexity, is actually just that same pattern repeated three times. Materials, one line for labor, a few lines for just listing out overhead items, no subtractions or anything like that here, just a list. And then we repeat the pattern three times. So hopefully this has helped to clarify the cost of goods manufactured statement and the cost of goods sold. But thank you for your time, and I will talk to you in the next section.